Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the RSpec gem and test-driven development. And I want to shout out to Miguel in Venezuela. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for commenting, for requesting this video. I'm really excited to see someone in Venezuela is watching my stuff and it's a really awesome request. RSpec is an awesome gem and so I'm pretty excited to be going through that today for everyone out there. So if you are familiar, or actually I should say, if you aren't familiar with test-driven development, I'll go into that for a second and we'll look at how RSpec facilitates that basically. So test-driven development, or TDD, is the software development practice of writing tests of some kind before you actually write the code of your application. Now, it's a it's it's pretty challenging to do because it requires you to basically know beforehand what your software will look like and for some people, you know, maybe they can do that. I am getting there, but for the most part can't. I don't have that good of foresight, and I think that that's the case for a lot of people. One of the interesting things is that it works like purely test-driven development works when you're starting projects for the first time, but less so when you're like maintaining them. When you're maintaining a project, chances are you're going to be not just writing totally new code, but also modifying and extending existing code, which means that a lot of what you'll be doing is modifying and extending existing tests. And so that's what I find myself doing a lot at my job, seeing tests for some code, knowing that the code will have to change. I change the code, the tests break, I change the tests. Now the now everything is in sync again and working. So there's something that I've never heard anybody else call this before, but I think it's pretty common, called test eventually development, where you just have your tests done eventually. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, TDD is something that's very much like, uh, I would say it's an academic pursuit. And I think that there are like some places that do it. Pivotal Labs is one of the more famous practitioners of that. But, you know, for, for most of the people in the world, test eventually development is probably good enough. And if you happen to be a wizard ninja of code and like have the foresight to be able to do it to write all your tests beforehand good for you I would love to get to your level someday so anyways for the example today what we're going to be doing is modeling basically a coffee shop now most of the time you'll probably be using RSpec and writing your tests for a Rails application that seemed a little bit excessive for me so we're just going to do it purely in like one Ruby file and call it good. So I put here in a gist on GitHub the whole example that we'll be working through basically. So I'll have a link for that for you. And it's actually, there's like a couple tests that I, or a couple like features that I didn't fully implement, but it's basically just like this, the, the purpose of this video is to sort of talk you through the thought process. And as I was like writing this example, I was like, okay, they'll probably get the point by now. So let's uh, let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna make a file called coffeeshop.rb, and we're going to open it in a text editor. Now, as we're starting out, so here's the premise for you: we need to build a a set of objects that models a coffee shop. So for maybe for whatever reason we have to model that. For the purposes of this video, it's a little contrived of an example, but it'll it'll help you learn the thought process. So think about a coffee shop program, maybe pause the video, maybe look at the gist if you want to, but you know, take take a second, pause the video, think about what might like what what a coffee shop might entail. So here's kind of like what I thought of. There's, there's, you know, I'm thinking about a coffee shop. I spend a lot of time in coffee shops, and what? So what's what's in there? And there's a few things. So I'd say there's coffee. I would say there are customers. I would say 
in a coffee shop, there are baristas, there are tables, there's an espresso machine, there's a cash register, there are cups. You can kind of, this is arbitrary, obviously, so you can go in as much or as little detail as possible. And in fact, at one point when I first, when I was first making this example, I was like, hmm, maybe I should make a person class and have customers and baristas like inherit from the person class since they're both people and so on. But I was like, no, this is like, that's sort of out of the scope um, for the example. So we'll have, we'll have this as our, as our premise to start off with now. Okay. So we're going to have tests for each of these. Although I don't think I actually, I'm not sure if I ever did tables. Yeah. I never did tables. All right, so we are not, we're gonna, we're gonna cut that example out or that, that line out. We have these six objects in a coffee shop and there's, there's kind of a method to how you write tests, the, the format that RSpec requires of you. So we'll look at coffee first because that's sort of the, the, or one of, one of the most straightforward ones in the example. So we're going to say describe coffee and then have do and end. So this is going to be, or these are going to be tests for the coffee class. And there's a couple, there's a couple things within that. So basically by making this describe coffee do end block, we're saying this is, this is like just testing coffee the coffee object and its methods so to do that we need to set up an instance of the coffee object and so for it like prior to running each test we need to have a local instance of coffee in existence for us to work on so that that brings us to this first block here before do and then end so for that block we need to instantiate the various objects that will be worked on here. And what that is in this case is it's coffee, like I said. So we'll say at coffee equals coffee.new. And we'll write our first test, which is it should be unprepared by default. You'll see the syntax again. This is, it's, a more, it's another do and end block. And you say it, and that's sort of the keyword and then in single quotes, the behavior that you expect from it. We're going to say coffee will have an initial state of prepared, which should be false, right? Because it's not ground yet. It's just in the bean format. You can't drink coffee in a bean format. And you can't brew coffee in a bean format either. So initially, that prepared attribute is going to be false. And th then you can see here, this is the syntax to say expect the attribute to be false and by the way there are lots of resources online that tell you our spec naming conventions and how to assert equality or expect values to be this and that and so on this video is starting to run a little bit long for one video so I'm going to do one and possibly more follow-ups and I'll have links for those of course in the description as well so Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.